guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. I am here in the Medical Realities Office, joined by... Shafi Ahmed. I'm a surgeon and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Medical Realities. So you just showed me the most incredible video that I have ever seen. It is a bit of the future. Can you tell me a little bit about this operation that you did? It's with the HoloLens sure. and it went across three different mm -hmm. countries. At three different continents, three actually. Different continents. Nina. Oh my God. So, <laughs> Exciting. So this is real sci-fi. So one of the things we're trying to do is think about how we change the way we communicate uh, from doctor to doctor or doctor to patient, for example. So we used a HoloLens um, yesterday to connect four people in three continents. That was the US, India and the UK, London. And what we did, we during the operation that I was performing on a patient with cancer, we took some time out, put the HoloLens on and we connected into a virtual space. We could share the scans, the images of the patient, interact with them, discuss the case in more detail, much like a multidisciplinary team meeting that we do normally in healthcare practice. This was obviously quite different. It was virtual, there's people around the world connecting, and you know, it was an incredible experience. It's the way I think uh, the healthcare in the future should progress. So it was during the operation, we're halfway during the operation, and this was something called a laparoscopic right hemiclectomy, a routine but major operation for cancer. And I thought during the operation, sometimes if you want help, for example, and you can't find it straight away, what about connecting with someone on a different part of the world? And it's a question about globalisation. If someone wants help and support, well, actually the whole world can support them. And these are the kind of technologies that will, uh, I guess, connect people, make the world much smaller, and actually make healthcare more equitable because you're getting information and knowledge from anyone in the world with their own expertise. So in front of me, um, tell me about yourself and who are you, where are you watching from? Hey, this is Ian. Uh, I'm here in, in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. I'm one of the creators of Thrive. Pleasure to be here today. Thank you for joining us from the US. Um, Shailash. Hi, this is Professor Shailesh Srikande. I'm the chief of GI and HPB cancer surgery at the Tata Memorial in Mumbai in India. Thank you very much for joining us on this special occasion. And Hitesh Patel. Hi, I'm Hitesh Patel. I'm a consultant colorectal surgeon and I'm joining you from the London Independent Hospital. So what I'm going to do now is just take out the, um, the models we've got here. That's the pelvic model. We're going to get the scans all out here and then we're just going to just move up to the next scan here and also the endoscopy report. So um, Professor Shailash, would you mind just talk to me about the case and what your thoughts are about how we should manage this patient? Sure. To me, this looks uh, like a lesion in the right colon if I see the CT scan image, but of course I also see the colonoscopy image now. Uh, but let me comment on the CT scan. It's a triphasic CT scan first. And yeah. uh, it's, it's clear that we are dealing with a terminal ileum cecal ascending colonic lesion. Uh, this lesion has got transmural involvement and there is a degree of, um, just a second, yeah, there is a degree of uh, peri tumor stranding but all other planes including the plane with the right kidney uh, is well preserved uh, to me this patient uh, after colonoscopic confirmation which i see the image on the colonoscopy as well yeah so we are dealing with an adenocarcinoma yeah and uh, uh, this is a right colon cancer and to me uh, the patient should be worked up distant metastasis ruled out so that we have got a good staging for the patient to discuss with the patient yeah. as well as discuss the prognosis with the patient and sure. then plan for surgery. Yeah. Okay, and Hitesh Patel? Hi, so I'm joining you. I'm Hitesh Patel, I'm a consultant colorectal surgeon. I'm joining you from the London Independent Hospital and it's been a fascinating experience to join you in this um, virtual reality way. Um, and I agree with Salesh that this um, lady needs a laparoscopic right hemicolectomy um, with a curative intent. And what was the feedback that you got from your colleagues after having done it? What did they think about seeing all this information and giving you real-time feedback on what you had to do? Yeah, so I think we all found it quite exhilarating, quite inspiring. I think we all share the same belief that you, know, you should share knowledge as far as possible, that geography or distance shouldn't really matter. So they all are on the same sort of mindset as I am about how we share that common knowledge about patients, about clinical care. And so we all found it really interesting. Obviously when you first enter the space and you see 
blue objects in front of you and uh, sort of scans coming at you. It does feel a bit like Iron Man. He's like your Tony Stark of, of surgery, for example. But actually, once you get past that, it becomes quite normalised fairly quickly. And actually, we had a very lucid conversation about the patient, which I'd have had if you were sitting next to me, for example. And it seemed no different. It just in a different medium using latest technology. So you use Thrive. Can you tell me a little bit about mm. who they are and how you or how they approached you? I, I know this was a long term conversation to arrange all of mm. this and obviously very difficult to arrange across mm. different hospitals, different continents. And then, you know, the dependency, I suppose, on Wi-Fi. Yeah. So obviously it was a lot of um, collaboration that went on for a few months. Um, Thrive is a, a software created by a company called Atheo. That's A-E-T-H-O, based in the US on the East Coast. They're a startup working on the Microsoft HoloLens, creating this kind of software package. About a few months ago, I gave a talk at Cannes Line uh, Festival around producing my own avatar using photogrammetry that you might have seen, using 104 cameras, creating real-life images and volumetric um, a sort of version of me, if you like. They've seen that, and they're working on the same principle about avatars, holograms, telepresence, teleportation, and we connected, and we thought, let's do something really dramatic. Let's connect the world. Uh, let's use their software and what we had available at Medical Realities. And I guess that's how the conversation started, and that's where we ended up yesterday. Is this the first time that they've done something like this before across different continents? This is the first time it's ever been done anywhere of any description I've, I've come across. First time we've used the software properly. First time we managed to connect three different surgeons across three different continents using holograms, using avatars, using uh, Microsoft HoloLens. This is the first, the world's first, there's no question. And what are they looking to do with the software? Are they looking to do surgery, but are, are they also looking to use it for other applications as well? I think essentially it's a communication tool, it's a conferencing platform, so connecting people um, to in different parts of the world. So what we're doing with Thrive is really trying to empower everybody, no matter what business or what vertical you're in, to have those subtle nuances you have when you're face to face with others. So hi from Atlanta, this is Glenn again from Savannah and we're here in your real world in Philadelphia. For surgery I like to get to the stage where we develop it further, where I can actually uh, either hollow port myself or teleport myself to another part of the world walk around that room, peer over the shoulder of the surgeon, see what they're doing, give them advice, and then disappear within a second. That's where we're heading towards with a kind of uh, these uh, technologies that allow you to immerse yourself but also be able to transport yourself in the virtual space. Is that in the works? So you're working on that right now? That's the idea. It's a long road, um, but we're going through many um, cycles of iterations. And I think we'll get there uh, in due course. The tech is catching up pretty fast. We're moving ahead and, and sort of we want to change the way we uh, sort of design a doctor-patient relationship and change the whole paradigm, I guess, of med medical healthcare. And I, I guess we'll get there sooner rather than later, I'm hoping. Technology is accelerating exponentially in medicine. So many things are coming together. They call it the fourth industrial revolution, as I'm sure you realise, with nanobiotechnology, genomics, VR, AR, uh, AI in the background, and robotics all coming together at a really optimum time for healthcare. So for me, this is the most exciting time to be in healthcare with huge changes taking place. I think for the better, because we're suffering not just in the UK, but on a global level with increased demand, but not enough capacity. It's a common theme. There's no more money. It's hard to justify new healthcare services without making it more efficient. By doing this kind of thing, you're suddenly making healthcare better and more efficient. You don't need to travel. You can use the same people around the globe in a different way. And I guess we can position doctors' jobs in a different way. Their roles will change, and it'll be much more professional and the small tasks that we do routinely will be handled by AI or some sort of robotic machine, for example, to augment your healthcare and support you. And the doctors they then redesign their roles to allow them to do the job they were trained for. So I think it's a realignment of our, our, our roles in healthcare and also using technology to augment those roles in a way that's just far better than we've had already. So do you have advice for doctors and nurses out there who are doing the traditional training right now do you have any mm. advice for them with regards to technology that exists today? Do you think that they, what they're learning now might be outdated by the time they, they graduate? Absolutely. I make this whole comment all the time that uh, medicine and healthcare is stuck with dogma and tradition. Okay, that's the problem with healthcare. And my thoughts to people is that if you accept dogma and tradition, you accept mediocrity because things are changing every day. Mm -hmm. So challenge what's around you. Everything's going to change. So everything around you can be better, more efficient. So don't ever accept what you have today is going to be the way you're going to work forward because you can make it better. 
and therefore you have to embrace change. You have to employ in your own mind a sense of exponential medicine. Think about how you're going to be in 10, 20 years' time and multiply a thousand times because that's what's going to happen. Our brains don't cope with the kind of pace of change at the moment. So I just say think big, think wild, and think about how technology will improve your own clinical practice. And then you may be up with the current technology platforms. Do you have any maybe tips for developers out there who think, wow, this is incredible. Uh, I learned all of these skills, coding, uh, haptics. I want to get into healthcare. Uh, do you have any advice for them? Sure, so we're, we're crying out for healthcare people to come in and tech people to come in. We have, uh, I guess, early adopters. We have inventors in healthcare who want to work with the best technology people to support them. And I think it's a collaboration. We can't do it ourselves. We have ideas. We need people here to come and support us in that whole journey. And I think that kind of collaboration uh, to improve healthcare uh, is going to be very important in the future. And also healthcare is opening itself up now, gently, to the ideas that we're going to change. So I think this is the right time to be involved in healthcare because uh, it just seems the, uh, the atmosphere is ripe for rapid development and deployment. Well, fantastic. This sounds very exciting <laughs> space to be in right now. Thank you. Um, where do we go to find out more information about what you do and what you're doing in healthcare? So you can follow our company website on medicalrealities.com. You can follow me all over social media. <laughs> I'm called The Virtual Surgeon on various social media platforms, or you'll see me um, around in, in various conferences and tech conferences around the globe giving keynotes and that sort of thing. Fantastic. Uh, Obviously, head over to their website if you want to learn more about what the virtual surgeon is up to. And if you want to learn more about virtual reality, head over to vrfocus.com.